Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. You ever ask yourself, why did I buy that? Fuck no, that's the wife's job. <laughs> Here we got today in the shop. We're going to have a look at this Durapulse VFD, what for driving three phase industrial motors in the comfort of your own Empire of Dirt. Whilst me and my buddy Duke Law were out uh, specking the drive for the Mazak, we decided might as well knock some of these projects out of the park. Went to Automation Direct and got this new Durapulse. Well, it's not so new, but t it's new to me. It's the GS3 drive. I got the GS2 drive on the Halifax Boxford lathe. Works a treat, no problems at all. And uh, we saw we had the variable spindle speed and all that. We can mess around with all that. And while I was on the Automation Direct site, of course, Automation Direct, it's not an American, it's an American um, subsidiary of a Japanese company, and the Japanese company is actually Koyo PLC. You know, I, I said this before, nobody ever gets fired for, for buying Microsoft. Nobody ever gets fired for buying uh, IBM. So for a big industrial user, they're not going to use this brand a click. Chances are they'll use an Allen Bradley or an ABB or a Siemens, something like that. But these click PLCs for small projects are fucking brilliant and cheap cheap roughly twice the cost of an arduino and you have a an industrial hardened device so as i said thank you patrons because what we are going to do not only are we going to do uh back of the class in the shop kind of messing around with hydraulic circuits we're also going to tie that in with pneumatics and programmable logic controllers not for the fucking geniuses for us here in the shop just to get her chooching, give you an idea how it works. So you're watching this channel every time I pull out the Bridgeport milling machine, you think to yourself, geez, I really ought to get a, a mill. <laughs> life, hashtag life goal. I want to buy a milling machine. Well, partner, if you want a milling machine, you need three phase. You need three phase power. In your house, it's only wired for single phase. So industrial installations have three phase. You need industrial power in your house. How are you going to get it? It's 2017. I say that again. It's 2017. We're living in the fucking future, man. What they have now is a brain box what gets inputs single phase in and outputs three phase in a box. This fucking box is like two, three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. That's it. We peel off the face Kardashian style after a hard day of people don't like me stick needles in my face to reveal a beautiful pcb right off the hop here we got the dc bus big old capacitors these act as batteries as well as filtering and that is the brain box there all of the control is in here and it just gets we can also do remote control on this if we could get the jesus thing to pop out it's not built for it's built for 14-year-old uh, Chinese girl fingers. I can't even get in there to take that out. Per my usual disposition, I'm trying to be ginger carefuling with this. I'm kind of wanting to use it again. Fuck me. Fuck! It never ends well until it does. So this is the control board. This would be low voltage. And then all the high voltage stuff is done on this board. Uh, through this header here all these pins or oh, get into the header and this is just control so this would all be low voltage stuff there might be some tw 10 volt uh, outputs but other than that all low voltage stuff surface mount components some schmoo some conformally coated schmoo on there and a, a couple dabs of elastic to keep the mechanical stuff from vibrating free now on here are some operational amplifiers, all sorts of little ICs, passives, doing this, that, the other thing. Electrolytic caps for decoupling, a little choke here. This is the brain box, of course, the MCU, the microcontroller unit. Here's the clock for the microcontroller unit. That would actually contain a, a crystal of quartz that uh, you, put, you put power into and it oscillates and it, it, it uh, you need to you need to have the signal going in there to oscillate but this gets it in a lockstep so that it it it's always oscillating at the same rate and that gives a signal 
for the clock of this MCU so it knows the time with the fresh Gucci watch type deal. There's all kinds of opto couplers here, all kinds of opto coupling on the output as well, and then some tiny little MOSFETs. All of these are uh, grounded through high resistance resistors in order to make sure that they're not floating. There's no floating weird voltage here. I believe this little guy, this little relay is probably just for power, just to power the board. When you first give it power, it'll click on, click off. I bet you that's what that is because all the other outputs are all uh, MOSFET controlled. Now having a look at the power side, this is the fun part here. This is the beefy section where the rubber meets the road. We get input, single phase in our case, but you could input three phase. And what happens to it? Now AC, that's AC, alternating current. So if you look at the waveform, it looks like a wave, an AC waveform. That gets put into here, it gets rectum fried. There's three diode packs here, and that gets rectified into DC, but it'll be DC, some voltage, and a whole bunch of pulses. We'll, we'll knock the top of that AC off, switch it around, you get a whole bunch of pulses, okay? But DC pulses. So what we do is we feed that into a bunch of capacitors. This is called the DC bus here. And these are fucking monsters. That smooths out that ripple. So now you get pretty steady DC. High voltage, it, it, this would probably be 440 volts. If you input 230, probably be 400 volts on the DC bus. Now, what we do now, we got the DC. How do we get AC back out to the motor? What we do is we get the brain box here to send a signal to fire these IGBT insulated gate bipolar transistors. They are super, super skookum MOSFETs, essentially high voltage, high power, and you see how much power they use. That's the package there. Look at the heat sinking. Wah. So you know there's something fucking serious going on there. What is happening is we are building AC from DC by turning these off and on very, very rapidly, say 5,000 times a second minimum, probably more like 20,000 or 16,000 times a second. And if you look on a scope at a very quick time shot on the kilohertz, on the kilohertz range, what you'll see is DC pulses. You'll see square wave pulses coming out. But if you back up the bus and you look at it at a, a one second, you know, at 60, 60 hertz or whatever, you will start to see it will develop into a nice sinusoidal waveform. So if you look at it microscopically, what you're getting is chopped up pulses, noisy, noisy, noisy. But if you, if you take a step back and you look at it, slow things down, what happens is you end up building a nice AC waveform. Of course, a motor, is a big inductor so that levels off the current spikes anyway and you end up motors run just fine off that chopped up noisy power that we're sending it there's a bunch of stuff we can do to fix that as well we can put in line reactors and so forth but most well any three-phase motor i've ever come across the cheapest to the most expensive will absolutely run on one of these no problem and it should be a little sticky on account of the diaper rash. Oh, cream, a tea bag. And here we go. So lots of, yeah, we can see the output leads, the three phase output leads, and they've added some solder. They, they've omitted the solder mass so that when they, uh, this gets soldered, we increase the thickness of that trace in order to uh, increase the ampacity, well, the current carrying capacity of it. And here on the output, we have, we've also got some metal oxide varistors. So that takes out the, the spikes. Of course, the spikes, the voltage spikes are what kill these insulated gate bipolar transistors. Well, that and heat. And in the package here, I might have one that I blew up. If you connect these, that's the thing. These things are so fucking tough till you connect them up the wrong way. On a fantastic voyage now to the wall of shame. My wife says I'm messy, but just differentially organized. There we go. That's the... See, I, I know where everything is. Uh, so we'll have a... Oh, fuck me. <laughs> that was... I shit my cacks on that one. 
made for an uncomfortable ride to surface I'll tell you that that's a yeah that's a brass lug melted right half in two I'll tell you though on the plus side I do know what fill your boots means yes sir buddy boy that's her there exhibit a of the wall of shame I set this up this is just a bigger or a smaller drive brand fucking new GS2 drive I bought set it up for the pilot processing plant I had set up in the garage for uh, running some ore from a prospecting trip I think there might be a Vijayo uh, from way back possibly it might have been deleted but in any case so this is what happens when you fuck up you get all pescated and uh, connect the leads up backwards now you wouldn't think because this is this is so high voltage and stuff in my mind it didn't seem that critical or at least at the time or maybe that was the other one I blew up I blew up a couple of these if you wire them up wrong here's what happens inside these IGBTs insulated gate bipolar transistors now a diode is a one-way check valve so if you connect up the wrong way the one well check valve instead of checking the voltage now it allows the voltage to go through the the diode heats up instantly lets the smoke out and lets the smoke out into this uh, goo this protective goo what's inside here these are really neat but that's all that's in there that's all that's switching your two horsepower in this case and in the in the bigger models 30 horsepower it's just this wafer thin bunch of silicon with some copper on there and some some semiconductors all these little bond wires I mean it's just the, it's incredible what pixies can do if you give them some proper choreography there's a high current high well, high power board high high voltage board and they lots of elastic in here they've omitted on these little guys these can shake around a little bit uh, is that an issue probably not because they're not that big no obvious tombstoning nothing real scabby like you see on the uh well the ones off flea bay they're super super scabby drives i've had one apart there's a vajayo there somewhere if you want to have a, a gander at that one thing i will say though these opto couplers kind of tweaked off a little bit kind of a little bit gnarly looking right in here you see that sort of messed up so that could have been bad but obviously it works it's still uh, it's, it's not that bad it's just it has moved now we see what we got for our 200 and some odd doll hairs pretty good deal I would say click almost a sore dick deal you can't beat it <laughs> well what we'll do though what we will do is we will get a nine wire induction motor three phase induction motor what has not been identified just the leads flapping in the breeze We'll do a video on how to identify the leads if there's no markings there. You don't know what motor, because a lot of guys get those motors. Oh, it was a great screaming deal, three-phase motor. None of the none of the wire markings are there. They're just flapping in the breeze. Well, they're fucked. They might as well throw it out because there's no way to hook it up. How are you going to figure that out? The IGBT module is a good. Infineon out of Germany. They, of course, own now International Rectum Fryer. Uh, Nichion capacitors but they're they're wrapped for some reason which I find kind of suspect made in Mexico I don't know no that's the number it looks like it's made in Mexico 330 look at this though well what's the deal with this why different sizes what's going on why would they have a smaller size in here that's bizarre. In my estimation, the value proposition here, the chooch for your chach, is pretty fucking good. Especially when you compare something like a Huang Li or, or Hung Lo drive from Flea Bay, but the thing is total garbage. All of these components are all name brand. Texas Instruments, looks like some Fairchild Oplo couplers. This guy's a Renesas Res, sort of a, you know, something you wouldn't always see. It's, it's not like a ST or a, a something else, but it's a Renesas 16-bit computer. It says on the data sheet, and even the contacts, these Phoenix contacts, they're all listed here. There's none of this chintziness with the with the crappy leads. You know the 
those crappy blue leads and then the, the tab doesn't go up all the time. You got to just garbage, right? Just garbage. These are good. So you really are getting a good value for dollar here. All name brand components, nothing really chintzy. Quite happy. I'm quite happy with my purchase. I think it'll serve us well. A little tight here to get this guy in. There's no mechanical. Well, there's one screw and then it's all tabbed. But there, there's nothing like rattle trapping around. You know, it's all well thought out and well affixed as, as witnessed by me having such a hard time getting this in. Once it's in there, it's, uh, it's in there pretty good. Tap it, tap. There we go. There we go. Nothing the old Fonzarelli couldn't fix. I'm quite pleased with the build quality. Not surprised though. I have had the GS2 apart and it's the same. Same. This may be a little bit updated, a little bit more skookumified. The, the cost difference is minimal between the GS3 and the GS2. One thing though that I do like on the GS2, it's got a potentiometer for speed control right here. This just has the, the up down beep boop. So that's, that's not as good for a small thing. However, on a, on a belt sander, you know, you're not going to be changing the speed that, that often. So here we can run it on remote. Just you got to buy that cable and you can run it wherever you want. And then we got a couple light pipes here just to show you when the drive is on in case the display is in there. Uh, this just goes on like here. Warn oh yeah, heed the warning. Heed the warning. Do not connect AC power to the output terminals T122. So output terminals. Output terminals. What's that mean? Not input. That means the motor terminals. So <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. You're not even my real dad. Yeah. So when you when you buy this, you might as well buy two because if you're not paying attention, the fucking Murphy is going to get you right in the arse. He did me twice, two times. <laughs> Shame on me. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. Come on.